Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review the movies The Night Before and Krampus. So The Night Before is written and directed by Jonathan Levine. He is the same guy that brought you movies like 5050 and Warm Bodies. Both movies I think are great. We also have the talents of Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Anthony Mackie, and Julian Bell and Michael Shannon. So The Night Before is about these three best friends that have a Christmas tradition every year. Ever since Joseph Gordon-Levitt's parents passed away, they've been together spending time with each other on Christmas every year. But with Seth Rogen now having a baby and all that, their tradition has to come to an end. So that means they need to make their final year of having their tradition as memorable and as chaotic as possible. As I said, this movie is directed by Jonathan Levine as well as written by him and he did direct 5050 and Warm Bodies and I thought both of those movies were really great. He did a very great job making those films. I was not looking forward to this movie. The trailers did not really impress me. I've only laughed maybe a few times during the trailer. I was hoping this film would surprise me and now that I've seen the night before, it's honestly the film I expected. The night before is just mediocre at best and just being utterly forgettable. But of course there are some good to the night before and one of those positives is that the performances from Seth Rogen, Anthony Mackie, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, they're all very well done. They have really good chemistry with each other. You buy them as best buddies. And the way they would just interact with each other, you know, it was very nice. I did really like how the three of them acted. You know, it did make for fun moments here and there. One of the moments I actually like from this film is a scene that I guess you could say does a parody from that big piano scene in Big. You, you know that movie with Tom Hanks, a very well done flick? Well yes, th these guys actually get on that big piano and it creates for a very creative montage. So that was a very fun scene to me. I actually really liked that. It does have some funny parts. It is far in between, however, so whenever I do laugh at a certain moment, it, do, it takes a while for me to laugh at another. I would say overall, I probably laughed hard at maybe two or three parts in total. I laughed out loud. The rest, I didn't laugh hugely, but I kind of went, ha ha, that's funny. I do feel like Jonathan Levine did a very good job directing this film. Michael Shannon appears in this film too, and I actually thought he was funny. He's only in it for a few scenes, but for the few scenes he's in this movie, he definitely steals a show. If you see this film, you'll probably see why, but let's just say he has an interesting role. And for my last positive for this movie, there are some heartwarming moments to it. You know, like with Seth Rogen. Anthony Mackie and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, there are some nice heartwarming moments that this movie adds, you know, to take a break from the comedy, which I think is really nice because if I have to be honest, I actually enjoyed the heartwarming moments more than I did with the actual comedy. But now my negatives with The Night Before is that most of the humor in this film does not work for me at all. It just comes off as so forced. And that's the problem, in my opinion, with The Night Before. The whole running gag of this film is Seth Rogen being high on cocaine and drugs because his wife gave him the drugs to enjoy like his last year of doing the tradition with his friends. So he's on drugs. And while there were a couple of times where I kind of found it funny just in a couple of spots. For the most part, it was getting old when he was doing more of his, oh my gosh, I'm so high on cocaine. I'm just sitting in the theater going, okay, when is this just gonna end? It's getting really, really old. Lizzie Kaplan, who you may remember from The Interview, which is a movie I actually really liked. I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was hilarious personally. She was great in that film. She's so wasted in the night before. And while she does give a pretty decent performance, her character is not likable. And that's where I get into my next flaw with the film. It does try to shoehorn this romantic storyline between Lizzie Kaplan and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. 
Lizzie Kaplan's character was just so unlikable. She just came off as a bitch the entire time. I kind of understand why she was acting that way towards Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but I still felt like the way she was talking to Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I just didn't really appreciate that, so I didn't like her character, and I just didn't really care about their storyline. The movie just feels very dull and just so repetitive, and as for the writing of the film, you know, it's not bad, it's just there. Just in my opinion, the writing could have been a lot better, and I just feel like the storyline as a whole into this film, you know, it's not bad or anything, but it's just not very memorable. And that's a shame because, you know, not only do I want to have a lot of good laughs in the comedy, but I want a storyline that's interesting. And unfortunately, the storyline of the night before really is not that great in my opinion. Overall, I thought The Night Before was just an okay movie. I came into it expecting a meh movie, and that's what I got coming out of the theater, just a meh movie. But it is a bummer that it didn't surprise me, considering one, it's a Christmas comedy, and two, it has all of these talented actors right here. And considering that lately I've been really impressed with Seth Rogen's other work, like just to name a few, The Interview, Neighbors, This is the End, I was really hoping the night before would surprise me, and unfortunately, it just doesn't. I know I'm probably going to be in the minority with this movie because I know a lot of people really enjoy this movie, and that's cool. More power to you if you really liked the night before. I respect that. But personally, it just didn't really do it for me. It's not memorable, and that's why I'm going to have to give the night before two out of four stars. Man, 2015 has not been a good year for comedies, and it stinks that not even a Seth Rogen Christmas comedy could save that. Okay, now I'm going to be reviewing Krampus. So Krampus is directed by Michael Doherty, who also directed Trick or Tree, and the film stars Adam Scott, David Kochner and many more talent. So Krampus is about when Adam Scott's son loses the Christmas spirit, when he has a very disgusting and despicable family that's just rude and mean and it just drives him to not believe in Santa Claus or just anything like that. So when that happens, he brings Krampus and Krampus Man, is he after the family, and that's all I'm going to say. I went to Krampus not too excited. I just kind of came into this movie going mixed. You know, I was willing to give it a chance, because I did want to give it a chance. It had my curiosity, at least. But I just wasn't sure how this film was going to turn out. It could go either way. It could either be really bad, maybe meh, or good like very fun and it is from Michael Doherty who directed Trick or Treat which I actually did do a review on for this channel if you want to check it out I saw that one for the first time not too long ago so I think it's pretty cool that I saw his film Trick or Treat for the first time and then a couple months later I got to see his next film Krampus. If you guys have seen my review for Trick or Treat you know that I wasn't really a fan of that film I know it has a huge following I respect what Michael did with that film but personally at the end of the day that film was not for me so I wanted the Krampus not only to be surprised by it hopefully be surprised but I was hoping I would enjoy it more than Trick or Treat and guys that's exactly what I got. Krampus really surprised me and I definitely had more fun watching this one than I did with Trick or Treat. This movie is by far one of the most surprising movies of 2015 and already from the start the reason this is one of the most surprising movies that came out in 2015 to me is first of all the concept. The concept is brilliant it's creative, it's original. I don't think we've ever seen a movie that deals with Krampus. Like, we've heard of Krampus. You know, we've heard of Krampus in some shape or form, but I don't think we've ever seen a telling in the movie. And so I thought how this movie did that was really cool. I do think Adam Scott, David Kochner, Bertha from Two and a Half Men, yeah, she's actually in this film, the grandma, 
pretty much I felt like everyone did a really great job, especially when it comes to the grandma. You know, the grandma was just fantastic in this film. This movie has a Gremlins vibe to it, and that's really cool to me because, you know, I thought Gremlins was a great movie. I had a lot of fun with Gremlins. Seeing the Gremlins vibe that Krampus brings, it's really refreshing and cool, and it's so much fun. The practicality that goes into this film looks marvelous. I love the practical effects. I loved how natural and beautiful looking it is. It really fits for the world. Everything just looks so natural and clean. I heard apparently the only CGI used in this film are the gingerbreads, which I had a lot of fun when it came to the gingerbread characters. I'm not going to spoil anything, but let's just say it created for some of the funniest moments in this film. And that's what also surprised me. I was actually surprised at how funny this film got at times. There were actually some moments in Krampus, you guys, where I just died laughing. And here's how I was surprised by Krampus, all right? As soon as this movie opens, I'm already laughing hard. Already from scene one, I was sucked into Krampus. Michael Doherty, I thought, did a great job directing this film. He uses a lot of wide shots for you to look at the snow, look at the house that's filled with the snow, looking at Krampus, and just looking at this entire environment. He did a very great job at just keep you immersed into this world. The cinematography, Oh my goodness, the cinematography is beautiful looking. The script is so creative. This movie is so well written and it has a great message too about not losing your Christmas spirit, how Christmas is about being with your family and caring for one another, not being selfish or mean. However, my flaws for Krampus is that for the first 20 minutes, the characters were very unlikable. I understand they need to be unlikable because that's what basically starts the plot of Krampus coming to this family. But just for the first 20 minutes, it was really hard to connect with most of the family. You know, you had Adam Scott, who I really liked. He's definitely very likable here. Adam Scott does a great job here. You know, you liked his son and you liked the grandma, but really, and the wife too, but really everyone else was just awful, mean-spirited, especially when it came to David Kochner's kids. They were the characters I really didn't like at all, so it was hard to get through the first 20 minutes when you have very despicable characters. As for Krampus, you know, from what we saw in him, I thought the character design looked great. I loved how Krampus looked. It looked so beautiful and just the character design is so creative. The problem I had is that there wasn't enough of him. I felt like the movie focused more on those minions, right? His minions, I felt, had more focus than Krampus himself. And I just felt like Krampus didn't really do much in the movie. It just feels like he shows up from time to time just to kind of show up, and that's really it. I wish that we got to see more details of him because I felt like I didn't get to see enough of the details of like his character design. The movie can feel a bit repetitive too, I will admit, because you know, the family, they're in the house. Then they have to go out, then they're in the house, they hear a sound, then they have to go out. But I will say my biggest flaw with Krampus, however, is unfortunately the last three to four minutes of the movie. I appreciated what Michael tried to do with the ending of Krampus. I really did. It's a very ballsy move. So I give him props for taking a very ballsy move with this. It just felt really out of place, honestly. Like, it just didn't work for me at all. I just felt like the movie leading up to this very ending, the payoff just wasn't there. But overall, guys, Krampus is such a pleasant surprise. I had a blast with this movie, and I could see myself re-watching this movie every year for Christmas because it is the definition of having a 
fun time. I know not everyone is going to like this movie. I can understand why this movie is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Personally, for someone that came into this movie not really excited for it, I was pleasantly surprised by it. So I am going to give Krampus three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of the movies The Night Before and Krampus. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!